real simple introduction, sort of name, company, and like 10 seconds on what you do would be really helpful. So, um, Joan, you are uh, you were first in. Do you want to lead off? Sure. Joan Popolo. I'm executive director of a nonprofit organization, Action Innovation Network. And our network is a um, association of technology business incubators throughout the New England region. What we do uh, as a membership organization is share best practices for incubator management. We share resources, incubator to incubator for startup companies, and we provide them a slate of benefits. We have an international cool. program. Uh, with yeah, just that, that's more than 10 seconds, Joan. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're a hard taskmaster. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, we could, we have a busy agenda today. So, uh, Sandra, you're next. Do you want to uh, do a quick, quick intro? Sure. sure. So, I'm Sandra Delaripa. I have spent uh, almost 30 years in executive positions within the nonprofit, non um in in the nonprofit governmental arena and um i now 10 years harvest development group which is a consulting firm that works nationally with nonprofits on business practices and also own an e-learning platform called blossom cool thanks sandra and sandra is our guest speaker today so in case you didn't catch that I see leslie leslie do you want to do a quick intro and i would say if you're not speaking if you wouldn't mind going on mute uh, we do have some background noise. That would be great. Go, Leslie. Um, hi, I'm Leslie Bubello, and Scott's also on the call. Scott McGregor. We're with a, a talent acquisition company called Something New. Uh, we're based here in Connecticut, and we serve companies in uh, Boston, New York, and around the country who are high-growth startups and technology. That's awesome. Thank <laughs> Is that you. Is quick enough? <laughs> yeah, no, you're perfect. Uh, uh, Ivan. Calling us, uh, where are you today, Ivan? Are you in uh, Moscow or are you in London? Where are you? Hi there. Um, I'm in Moscow right now. Excellent. So, yeah. Do you want to so, um, give a quick introduction to GVA? Of course, sure. So my name is Ivan Brunitsky. I'm responsible for international business development at Global Venture Alliance, and we are a private innovation ecosystem, and we run corporate accelerators uh, and uh, help uh, developing countries to create their innovation eco ecosystems. Cool. And uh, Ivan and I got together a couple weeks ago in Boston, and they're going to be bringing some delegations of Russian companies to Boston. So uh, yeah, and probably right soon. it sounds uh, we're excited for sure. Uh, John Hannigan, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, principal at Choice Peterson. We are commercial real estate brokers who represent companies who are looking to uh, come into the U.S. Uh, or expand, buy their buildings as well, all, all things commercial. Awesome, thanks, John. How about you, Sophie, I see you. Yes, hi, everybody. Uh, very excited to join this group I'm among a very esteemed company here. Um, I have a company I founded uh, about six years ago called Global Commerce Education, and I help companies from abroad who want to enter the U.S. market. Uh, we help them with strategy, finding the right professionals to create their virtual team, and um, uh, cross-cultural training. Fantastic. Cool. Thank you. And Sophie, I appreciate our conversation yesterday. It was great to learn more about what you're up to. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, I Let's see. I see someone on the list. Uh, uh, yeah. They're short Hi, name I don't recognize. No, I'm, I'm Miles Lindahl. I'm from, uh, I'm a project associate with NUMA, New York. Okay. Um, I'm well, the one well. with the screaming baby. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm going to put it on mute almost immediately. But yeah, no, we, we are a, uh, we do um, learning expeditions as well as uh, we have a um, uh, soft landing uh, accelerator as well, uh, trying to help companies yeah, transition to New York and, and to America uh, and, and uh, make it as easy as possible for them. So with that, I'm going to mute before uh, the person who decided he would not take his nap uh, starts crying again. <laughs> Perfect. Welcome, Miles. And uh, who hasn't introduced themselves? I haven't. Mark Del Bianco. I am an attorney that works closely with startup companies, both domestic and coming in from abroad. Uh, particularly in the distribution area, helping them set up indirect channels for their sales forces. Perfect. Thank you, Mark, so much. Great to see you. Um, 
so let's see, has anyone else not introduced themselves? Hey, Bill, okay, it's cool. Scott McGregor. Oh, go. Hey, go ahead, Scott. Hey, how are you? So everything Leslie said <laughs> is true. Um, so I'm the CEO <laughs> of something new. Uh, like she said, talent acquisition and advisory services. And we do a lot with uh, international companies that are setting up shop in the U.S. to help build out their uh, sales, marketing, and client success groups. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Good to hear your voice. Um, let's see, anyone else that we missed? All right. Well, we have a busy agenda today. And uh, uh, as you heard up off the top, we have a guest speaker, Sandra Del Ripa, who will take the floor in just a moment for her 12 and a half minutes, which is going to be insanely cool. She gave me a preview two weeks ago. And I'm totally excited. Um, but before that, just uh, again, for those either if you haven't been on a call before or we need to refresh these things, just so you understand the purpose of what we're doing. Um, the Softland Partners is a network or consortium or a marketplace that helps international companies uh, with success. And so our true north here and everything we build this around is, uh, you know, does it help an international company safely? and successfully land in a new market. And uh, so our ethos, and for those that have become members, uh, you know our ethos is to maintain win-win relationships, uh, provide exceptional service, and always be fair, honest, and ethical in our dealings, uh, not just with each other, but more importantly, or most importantly, uh, with the international companies who we're helping. Um, so with that, uh, we again have, a, a, I think, a bunch of great things to talk about today, and the best of those will be um, the topic that Sandra will be talking about. So this came, just so you know, the origin of this topic, um, and uh, I, it, at the bottom of our agenda today, um, you'll see a link where you can contribute any uh, topics that you would like uh, on this, uh, on our calls. But this topic came from someone's recommendation uh, that we talk about how do we uh, essentially how do we create more connected tissue between uh, our member companies uh, to where we're doing everything from finding ways to collaborate to sharing knowledge, sharing contacts and relationships, and so on. And uh, you know, we we challenge our speakers to talk about sort of the three things we know. Uh, or, or that, that we need to know about a certain topic. And Sandra, being the overachiever today, is going to provide five things we need to know. <laughs> so, um, Sandra, with that, uh, you know, the floor is yours. And, and just the format for everybody, uh, she's going to have about 12 and a half minutes to sort of give us this uh, great wisdom. And then we'll have about seven and a half minutes to uh, ask our questions. So, um, and, and the point here is we're, we're not going to complete the discussion but um, she's very accessible. She's got great wisdom. Um, this is really to sort of begin the conversation. And if you have additional questions, we can certainly help facilitate, um, you know, any, anything you need. So with that, Sandra, please. Thank you. And, and I have my timer. So I am going to take 12 <laughs> minutes and 30 seconds. Exactly. Go. Um, so first of all, thank you. I was so honored when Bill reached out to me. First of all, I love Bill. We go way back. I admire him tremendously. And um, the fact that he thinks I'm what he said I was in this introduction <laughs> blows me away. It's very humbling. So thank you. Uh, but I also was very intrigued by this group. And as we spoke about the idea of connectivity, um, of interrelated activity and goals and obsessions and needs, it became clear, more clear to me that what we do within the nonprofit hive of organizations across the nation is really reflected in many ways in what you're doing. And that is that assistance outreach to constituencies that you're trying to stand up and launch and facilitate and support. Um, and one of the things that we frame work within, within the nonprofit sector, is this concept of community. Uh, we all belong to communities, um, whether it's your alumni, whether it's a business community, this is a community, what you're in, uh, whether it's your town, a geographic region as a community. And there are five basic elements that make up community 
that are immutable. They go across any type of community you can think about. And so what I want to do today is just quickly uh, run through those five components as a um, uh, stimulant for your conversation going forward. I'm not going to tell you how to interconnect. I'm not going to come up with ideas on, you know, what each of you do and how you can do it together. I don't know much about that. But I can tell you what the basic components of community are and translate that for you in a framework that then hopefully you can take away understanding conceptually and begin to think about how your community and the communities you work with fit within that framework. And hopefully that'll generate some very specific actionable tactics and ideas that you can uh, implement. Okay. So um, if it's fair to everybody, um, I'd like to share my screen just so that you're not all staring at my mug through this and you can share, stare at a um, document that I have. So let me just do that quickly and see if that works. Yeah, we can see it fine. Okay, Sandra. good. All right. So um, right now you should be looking at the five components of community. Um, communities are at the core of everything that we do, whether they're formal communities, informal communities, our families can be considered communities. And a community has these five immutable components to it. If it's missing one of the components, it doesn't make it a non-community, but it makes it a less than functioning community. So healthy, successful, robust communities really have these areas in it. And we have a cool example after I go through them that I think will help illustrate this. So uh, people, shared purpose, shared experience, shared resource, and trust. So let's unpack each of those people. It seems obvious that people are community. But we sometimes get sidetracked by thinking that we can have a business community or we can have a school community right? or we can have a sports community. Um, those titles essentially are accurate in that they define the industry or the are arena or the geography in which the community exists. But at the core of every community is people. People make up business communities and they make up sports communities. So people need to be at the center. But more important just focusing on people is the idea that the people have to know they're in community. They have to opt in or choose to be or stay in community. And most importantly, they have to feel a necessary component of this community. So people in a, as a whole are your community, but it's about the interrelationship with the people that makes that community strong. Some of the ways that's carried out are in the other four components. So we start with shared purpose. The community as a whole should have a shared purpose. I think right now you could think of what your shared purpose is as your community uh, is formed. But there might be sub purposes as well. And those purpose, those shared purposes might shift and change depending on what you're working on, what some of your objectives are, uh, what obstacles you've hit. So the overall shared purpose must be agreed by the people in community. They must all adopt into it and say, yes, this is why we're here. But they may also have some sub shared purposes that they're going to be interested or feel connected to as well. The best way to describe that is a university. So my school was just absorbed by Boston University. Um, but so that's the big shared purpose is the university of the Boston University is shared purpose for me. It is their um, culture, their growth, their sustainability, the education they provide. But the sub purpose there would be Wheelock College, which is now a, a college of Boston University. Then we move on to shared experience. And this is really important. It's what binds us together as a unified community. Now shared experience can be in person. So uh, the, commun the sports community, I'm a Yankees fan, shared experience for my community, maybe going to a game. We're sharing in that game. But it also could be virtual. We have an online shared experience, either a webinar or a seminar or a course that we're taking maybe um, about baseball or some talk back with some of the players. Shared experiences strengthen the bonds 
and leads to a more engaged community that knows that they are aligned and together in this shared purpose with other people. Shared resources is also very important. And uh, the reflection of shared resources always seems to be, well, what can the community give to the people? Or what can the people give to the community? But more importantly, at another level, is what can the people in the community share with each other? So shared resources can be global from community to people or people to community as a, as a whole, but it also can be on another level interactive with each other. And I think some of what you're looking to do with the people in your community is at that level. How can I share my resources with the people that are beside me in this community? And then the final thing is there, not because it's the last, but because for us, we realize it is, it underscores everything else. And that is trust. And trust we know is built through consistent and intentional communication. What consistent and intentional communication does is it builds this trust. It allows people to rely on the consistency of hearing about the community, of hearing from community members. And that consistency allows us to feel comfortable, to feel that we have security in our community. If suddenly the community that you were a part of, that you had shared experiences with, that you've shared resources with, that you've bonded with, goes silent, your trust begins to erode. You're not sure what happened. Was it me? Was it them? The intentional communication is just as important as the consistency. We want the community to care about us as much as we care about the community. And community is able to represent that by thinking about what the community members want to hear about and then creating intentional communication pieces to share with them. I don't know if anybody uh, makes contributions in this group, but we like to frame this for our nonprofits in this way. Sending out a monthly newsletter to your donors is simply just pushing information out. It's not intentional and your, your community knows it's not intentional because they're reading through and as they're reading through, they're, it's all about them, what's in it for me. They're trying to find within that piece of communication something that speaks directly to them. And if they don't find it, they think, well, this wasn't, you know, it wasn't meant for me. So we wanna make sure that our communication is intentional and it's consistent. And if we do that over time, we build trust. Simon Sinek has a great three and a half minute video clip on this that I think I would give everybody here as homework. Uh, it's called Consistency Versus Intensity. And in his true fashion, he, it really resonates. So people, shared purpose, shared experience, shared resource, and trust. I'm going to share with you a really good example. Um, my husband and I love going up to Bethel Woods in New York. It's where the original Woodstock site was. Woodstock, and, and we do a whole workshop on this called the Woodstock Experience, represents that entire scope of the five com components of community. So first of all, it was about people. Some people think it was about music. Mm, it was about people. It was about getting people to this location to share this experience, right? So the people that were going valued what was happening, they found it worthy, and they knew that other people were going to be there. They opted into this. The shared purpose, peace, love, and music, four days. Well, three days, it ended up to be four days. Everyone bought into that purpose. But when they arrived, 500,000 people found sub-purposes to be involved with, feeding each other, uh, playing in other pop-up bands, um, you know, sharing psychedelic drugs, bonding with new groups. So the sub-purposes were there. Shared experience was the overall experience of Woodstock. But again, there were these little mini pop-up experiences that was strengthening the feeling for this community, which is why it's lasted for over 50 years, that whole aura of Woodstock. Um, resources. Certainly um, the producers, were short on resources, but they had resources there for the community, but that wasn't sufficient. And so what did the community of people start to do? 
they started to share resources with each other. Here, have my oatmeal. I have a dry sleeping bag. Here's some underwear, you know. The resources began to be created between the members. And then finally, trust. If you'll notice, if you watch the Woodstock film, one of the reasons that people were so calm through the four days, despite all of the chaos that was going on, was because whenever there was downtime on the stage, I think his name was Tim, was up there with his microphone. And he was talking constantly, sharing information, not just blathering, but sharing um, notes from people that needed to find other people, spreading information about bad acid, spreading information about food, talking about the helicopters overhead, telling people to remain calm, asking them to love on each other. So that really over three days, very quickly, built up that trust. So we love to use Woodstock as the premier uh, example of how people shared purpose, shared experience, shared resources, and trust really is at the center of a community that can thrive. And that's my 12 and a half minutes. Look at that. That's the trained pro. Awesome, awesome. So what, um, th thank you, Sandra, first. And then uh, what questions do we have for Sandra? So the, um, just to give some context, obviously we're in formation. We're trying to figure out, you know, sort of our model. And I, you know, part of why, you know, I think somebody suggested this topic and also why we prioritized it was that, uh, you know, we, obviously we, we want to have some structure and begin building um, uh, a variety of, of assets and pathways to uh, engender uh, goodwill in the group and connect that connectivity and so on. So um, was there something that resonated with somebody in what Sandra said or a question that you have? I have if a question for the group. The, yeah, I have a question ahead. for the group. So what I want to know is, um, I'd love to hear from each of you what you believe your shared purpose is. Mm. Cool. Who wants to lead off? Joan, you're on. You're unmuted. Go. I took my mute off. Um, yeah, it resonated quite well with me as I, as you were speaking. I was sort of applying it to our own organization to see mm. how how good we are uh, in hitting all those five points, um, and I, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, that's kind of the way we work. We have a shared mission. Our mission together is to support entrepreneurs and building their companies and supporting the incubators together to um, help each other. Um, and, and in fact, that's how our organization originated, sort of organically grew with incubators needing each other's support system. And uh, so, I, yeah, I like, I like what you have to say there and how, how you spell this all out because it's true. It really works. Mm. Joan, do you consider the companies and the individuals you're working with to, to nurture, to bring into the U.S. part of your community, or are they a separate community? They're a separate community. Yeah. Our, our community is based on the incubators and other entrepreneur support organizations um, that then they serve the individual startup companies either domestic or international. Mm -hmm. Cool, awesome. Who else has a thought, question, or, uh, or you wanna to respond to, uh, to Sandra's question around uh, kind of why you're here? Who am I and why am I here? The famous James Stockdale question. Who will get that reference? Well, I don't mind going next. Um, I, what you explained uh, really uh, made a lot of sense to me and I really recognize it from the many communities that I've either um, led or, or been a part of. I'm part of uh, uh, several communities uh, right now and I see exactly all the pieces that you've described. Um, I find it very interesting that uh, things have evolved such that we now can have entire communities um, completely online um, and that's that's I think just really really very neat <laughs> uh, very cool um, my shared purpose here is uh, is helping is helping companies I mean I came into this country uh, 26 years ago 
and um, it took me a while to adjust uh, to the culture here and to how business is done. And I want to make that as easy as possible for companies coming in. I mean, business is complicated already. Um, adding in that whole cross-border uh, um, element, um, I, I would like for it to not be a complicate, uh, an added complication for them. Mm. Uh, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's my shared purpose. And, and I, I feel there's, um, another element, which is really to gain a lot of, um, richness, even for us within this community, um, uh, being able to, sh to serve our, um, our audience better, but also enriching each other from, by learning from each other. Yes. I, I enjoy that part a lot. And that's part of that um, shared resources. How can uh, the members of this community online now share what they have and know with each other to better enhance each other's ability to reach the shared purpose? Yep. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, who else? Do you want to stop What's sharing? Up, we can see you. Oh, uh, Sandra, the question was, Sandra, can you, do you want to stop your oh, screen sure. share? sure, sure. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, so who else? It's a bashful group today. So uh, can someone tell me about shared experiences among each other within this group, not with the outside community as um, was um, sure. expressed, but what are some of the shared experiences that currently exist or that might exist that you haven't discussed yet? No, I, I'm gonna call on Leslie and Scott. I know you, yeah, and, and I'm sure others have as well, but I know you in particular have uh, set up appointments with people within the group uh, and had some virtual appointments and probably some in-person appointments to uh, begin uh, building relationships and creating more of a bullpen for your clients uh, in terms of helping um, your clients create better connections with good service providers. Do you want to talk just for a moment on that? Sure. Um, I don't know. If I can't say anybody. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm running around New York. Uh, so yeah, we forged a, a bunch of really great relationships that have been uh, really beneficial. Um, so building that community for us is, is really important. Um, it's afforded us an opportunity to go up to Boston and uh, speak at the Bitters Consulate and, and a whole bunch of other, uh, you know, really neat opportunities that, uh, you know, we're looking forward to leveraging even more. So I think the more we build those relationships, the more we're able to offer to our, our clients. Um, you know, which has been fantastic. So we're, we're looking to leverage that even more. Cool. And, and Scott, just while I have you, who, I mean, as you look through the list, and obviously right now you can either look at the list online or you can look in the email invite. How are you deciding who is it, you know, because you have to prioritize, who is it you're going to reach out to first to, to you know, get to know a little better? We, we haven't been very strategic there yet. Um, so, you know, I think everybody's taken a little bit of a different tack. So, you know, different people on the team will reach out to different folks. We probably need to do a better job of being a little bit more intentional. Um, so right now we're, we're just kind of laying it up to be uh, a thousand percent honest. Sure. Well, it's a small list. It's, it's, it's easy to do it now. <laughs> For sure. Um, Cool. Um, any, yeah, Joan, go ahead. Yeah, uh, through your kind introduction, Bill, I had a chance to meet Ivan when he was in Boston, and we had a nice discussion about uh, ways that we might be able to work together. Are you still there? And uh, yeah, going forward, and there's some good synergies. I hope we have a chance to do something tangible together. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Agree. We had a lovely meeting, and... Uh, I feel like we're expanding our connections into Boston and it will be great, no doubt. That's fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you both for uh, being good at follow up. Uh, that's, uh, as as, uh, as you, all, you all are connectors, so you all appreciate, I'm sure, when people uh, follow up well to your, to your introduction. So, um, 
Well, good, Sandra. I think we're probably at, at about our time. Um, I, I really have to express uh, great thanks for uh, both you taking the time and also uh, sharing the wonderful wisdom with us. Um, you're certainly welcome to hang out, uh, but we probably need to press on to some other items. But uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for the invitation to stay. I actually uh, have to get ready for a presentation to Connecticut Public on Monday. So I got to finish up some stuff there. <laughs> but uh, this was wonderful. You guys sounds like, like you're doing a great job and would love to follow up with any specific details or ideas that come up um, if we can help brainstorm them. Thanks a lot, oh, Sandra. Wait, don't, All don't, right. Yeah, don't you worry. You'll be, you'll be deputized. <laughs> that sounds <Sandra>. great. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye, Bill. Thanks. Bye now. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, so again, you know, we're we're bringing these topics up uh, next month. Just so you know, our topic is where is it? Um, it is customer experience. Again, this is another topic that was recommended. So we have Aileen Cahill, who's the director of customer experience at Prudential Financial. Um, so she's uh, similar to Sandra, an expert in the field and uh, will give us some great ideas, but I'd uh, strongly recommend, it's on the top, towards the top of page two of the, today's agenda, at the very bottom of today's agenda, um, but at, at near the, the top of the second page, um, uh, is a link to a survey that you can take to just, and it's simple, it's uh, actually, since you did it, Leslie, I've uh, simplified it, so you just put in whatever ideas you have, and um, please just throw in ideas while they're fresh in your mind, um, anything that you think would be a good topic. Uh, but let's keep it around sort of the internationalization, the market entry, the soft landing space, uh, or have some context to that. Um, Sandra mentioned a video, a three and a half minute video by Simon Sinek. I, um, while she was speaking, went out and put the link in the agenda as well. So it's in her bullet at the very, it's the last bullet in, uh, sort of the section about her talk today. So it's uh, in intensity versus consistency is the, talk, is the um, three and a half minute video. So some updates uh, for you all, uh, actually a bunch of neat developments. So we will have uh, in March, our first two in-person meetups as an organization will be in New York uh, and Alice Chin has helped us organize uh, this, but it's going to be March 18th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at a, um, a law firm, Gottlieb, Rackman, and Reisman, and uh, they're on Madison Ave, right near Grand Central. Um, so uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, we have a capacity of 50 people in this venue, so it will be um, somewhat limited. Uh, so if you're, and we don't have an invite yet, but I would say probably by early next week, we'll get out a meetup invite. And uh, certainly I, it would be very helpful if you would share it with your connections as well. Um, so if there are people that you think would be good in, in the network, um, they'd be great if you could share that with them as well. And uh, we'll definitely have some besides, uh, you know, sort of those of us that are service providers towards soft landing um, companies and market entry companies. We'll definitely have some trade organization representatives uh, there as well. So people from various countries and, um, and also from various industries who are uh, in their own way helping uh, companies enter the US and or uh, enter other countries. So, uh, or enter their home country, I guess. And, uh, and we'll do a similar event in Boston on March 30th, and this will be connected to the NBIA conference, the International Business Innovation Association conference that goes from, uh, what is it, the 28th to the 28th of March to April 1st. Um, and uh, so that will be from 545 to 715. We don't have a location yet, but we've got a bunch of sort of on a short list that are very close to the venue for the NBA conference, which is the Boston Sheridan, which is near Copley Place, if you know Boston. And um, so um, in any event, we'll, again, we'll get, as we have a location for that, we'll get out a meetup invitation. And besides signing up yourself and or your team members, 
um, you know, please share it with your networks uh, that it's appropriate for. And, uh, you know, this, uh, we don't have a capacity yet for that one. It obviously depends on location, but um, the goal um, of these will definitely be to begin, you know, building um, sort of uh, den community density. And we'll repeat this model in cities all around the world. We've got people now in the UK and uh, and uh, in India and Brazil, and maybe Ivan in Russia and Moscow who could get one of these started there. So, um, uh, but that's really the idea is, is the, that we can not only be global, but also um, very effective locally. And, and uh, it'll be a bit of a hybrid. Um, but any questions on those before I move on to, to other topics? Just, uh, from a uh, just you know sharing uh, your thoughts, who, who would be I uh, think they'd be able to make it to New York and or Boston? I can come to the New York one. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, I could do New York, and I might even be able to do Boston as well. Awesome. Cool. New York. Okay. Awesome. I'll be there in Boston. Yay. Bill, I don't know if they're already on your uh, invitee list, but the British Trade Office, you know, Joy Kinnear, um, I, we haven't been introduced to the New York office yet, but I presume you yep. are already working with them. So it seems like they would be yep. a good group too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a great idea. And uh, yeah, I'm sure. That, in fact, I looked at them as the first host and they, oh. as, they uh, they have a hard time hosting events at their at their site, but uh, uh, yeah, they're, they certainly want to include them. So, uh, who Leslie was referring to the uh, the British uh, Department for International Trade, so they're the UK's trade organization. Um, and so, good. Well, certainly, again, uh, feel free to share it uh, as soon as we get the invite out. Um, so. The Boston event will, as I mentioned, be sort of, uh, it'll coincide with the NBA, NBIA conference. I know some of you are planning to go. Some of you are uh, going to be a part of a, uh, a workshop there that uh, organizationally we're, we're hosting. So um, uh, that's going to be on March 30th. And actually, I'll be getting out an email to all of you, all of you that are involved in that. And for anyone else that wants to join us, just let me know. We actually have plenty of opportunity. To, it's going to be sort of a, a reverse workshop where we're facilitating um, the co-creation of a, a universal market entry readiness assessment. Uh, right now, many incubators have sort of homegrown their own, and not just incubators, but a, a lot of different trade organizations and so on. And kind of what we want to do is get, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 incubator leaders in the room and uh, really work through a, a more standard tool and one that uh, ultimately could be used not just by the incubators, but as they're handing off uh, their clients uh, to the marketplace or to any other providers or to people in another country, that um, there could be a more standard uh, portfolio or, or assessment that's done that uh, allows more streamlined communication so that companies uh, just part of both making sure that companies are properly assessed and empowered and, and prepared before they leave uh, to enter a new market, and also so that any of the support organizations have as good of a, an overview of uh, any gaps or needs uh, so that the support is, is effective. So again, if you can, uh, we have a, a group right now that's you know, sort of prepared to uh, facilitate this but we could use more. So if you're gonna be or could be in Boston, then just let me know. Um, and then um, the day before that, um, so that's on Monday the 30th, on the 29th of, um, of uh, March, there's what NBA calls the big conference, which is only focused on international where their whole conference is sort of international and domestic uh, incubation. Uh, or in, and innovation. Uh, the big conference is strictly focused on international, and that goes, I think it's now going from one in the afternoon to like 4.30 or 5, and we have a, we're going to be doing a panel discussion um, on the Boston's internationalization and soft landing community. So uh, there'll be 
some of the folks who are part of the group specifically from Boston, and in fact, uh, Joy from the UK DIT is going to be on that as well. Um, but uh, we'll be talking about uh, what what the soft landing community is like in Boston. So if you want to meet people from that local community, if it's helpful for you, um, no matter where you are, we're going to have a lot of them in that room on Sunday, as well as uh, what we're doing on Monday night as well. So uh, certainly take advantage of that if you can. Um, any questions or thoughts on that before we we move on? Cool. Um, so I know I'd shared this before, but I, I kind of want to make sure that we keep uh, keep this top of mind. Our goal by the end of this year is to grow the network to 500 member uh, service providers. Um, we're probably we're probably about a week or two away from beginning to do LinkedIn advertising and whatnot, but we're going to begin sort of a, a much more public push. Uh, we've got a variety and kind of our next bullet down is some of the, the marketing that we're going to be doing. Um, you do have um, at the very top of page two, if you're on the agenda, it talks about sort of phase one and phase two marketing. So phase one is sort of from today, I would say through June or the, will be some of the things we're, we're implementing. Um, and so you can today, just by following that, that link, you could submit a blog post. So uh, we do have a blog up and running on the site. And, you know, please just, and it's easy, just send us, uh, you know, if it's a Google Doc or a Word Doc or, or whatever, just send us the text, you know, give us whatever uh, image assets there are, um, any appropriate links that we need to be able to reference uh, you know, you and your organization, all that kind of stuff, and we will get them up on the site. There is a small committee that's kind of set to review these. We want to make sure that, you know, they're non-promotional, uh, but but really aimed at delivering good content in whatever sort of um, topic area within market entry that, uh, you know, you're choosing uh, to write about. And it, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to, you know, market entry doesn't have to be every third word if you're you know, in the staffing business, it could be how to hire a great sales team and, and maybe just the title is edited from something you used, um, you know, for, you know, your general business, um, but that, you know, the title has something about, you know, you know, market entry. That way we have, uh, uh, you know, something germane to the audience that we'll be looking to attract. Um, and uh, we can certainly use keywords and whatnot to help drive, um, you know, traffic and attention. And we'll, I would say we're probably 30 days away from beginning a monthly newsletter. Um, we've got a, now a, a good and growing list of, of not just service providers, but, but also a lot of trade organization professionals. Um, and so uh, we'll be featuring blog, you know, certain blog posts in those, um, uh, in those newsletters as well. So that, though, this will be potentially seen by a variety of audiences uh, in a variety of different uh, modes. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, we will also, and we're probably, I would say 30 days away from this as well, is uh, we'll start doing a podcast. Uh, we actually have a logo already. It's uh, called Softland Central. And we'll not only be at times interviewing um, uh, members uh, and partners, but also um, uh, people who are, you know, could be in government roles, leadership roles uh, around uh, market entry, internationalization type topics. So if you have ideas on topics or people who, that we should interview, um, please let us know. Uh, we, you know, we're kind of building that list now and uh, certainly would appreciate any ideas or, uh, or thoughts you have on that. But uh, um, we really want to, you know, sort of push out as uh, and give as many tools to um, both the market entry companies and the supportive organizations. Um, so ho hopefully that's helpful for you. A um, couple other things just to mention real quick, and then I'll I'll take a breath and certainly uh, look for your ideas and, and comment. Um, is sort of phase two, and I would say this is sort of you know sort of second half of the year, probably you know July. Um, is we'll develop and uh, get on the site a speakers bureau. Um, so, uh, you know, as we 
build this organization. Um, we certainly have a lot of experts on a variety of topics within the group. And so, um, and, and there are so many different conferences and um, uh, uh, trade delegations uh, and so on that, uh, you know, these organizations, in fact, I was talking to two today and I mentioned the Speakers Bureau and they said, wow, that's great because, you know, we always struggle to find, you know, people as we're going to different markets who could speak on a variety of topics that they're, you know, that their companies would be interested in or would be value, valuable for. So, um, so any of that, look for that uh, and certainly any ideas you have in terms of uh, ways to put that together uh, would be would be great. And then we'll start getting on uh, the social platforms. I think probably first will be will be LinkedIn, and and, and as we have content to share, that'll that'll make a lot more sense. Um, uh, we certainly want you all connecting as much as possible through our platform, but obviously the world might find out about us better via tools like LinkedIn and so on. So um, thoughts, questions, ideas, things that we should also add to this list or uh, or whatnot. Hi, Sophie, I have a bunch of questions. Um, I'm curious, and sorry if it's a little bit of a rehash because I wasn't around before, but um, where did the goal of 500 come from? And, you know, what's the objective in becoming big? Yeah, sure. Um, so it, I, I, I guess there's not necessarily a, um, there wasn't a formula used to create 500 other than uh, it's bigger than 400, and uh, so uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that, uh, um, I guess, considered. Other than we want to grow, and, and ultimately thinking about, you know, all the countries where companies are entering. You know, there are over 200 countries. So, um, you know, having resources and professionals and support organizations um, mapped out for those companies is a really big priority for us. And so, um, you know, uh, 500 is just barely even scratching the surface of, of how many are, are out there to, uh, uh, to support market entry. So we want to, you know, we want to be aggressive in terms of beginning to uh, give market entry companies access and tools so that they can uh, more safely and uh, successfully enter, enter markets. And it's not going to happen if we're a group of, 30 or 40 or 50. It's got, it's got to get much bigger and I think it has to get much bigger quicker. Um, so uh, I wish I could, you know, give you a, a you know, an That's algorithm cool. that we use, but, <laughs> but it wasn't. That's what I was looking for, sort of the, you know, the, the thinking behind it. Um, yeah. And I don't want to monopolize the floor, but I have another question. Um, there's other organizations like the Global Chamber that are, that could be seen to be doing something similar. And I'm just curious, how do we want to differentiate ourselves and you know what's the rationale for starting something like this that's different uh, from scratch sure yeah so i think it's a great question um so in the conversations i i've had um with trade uh, i mean all sorts of trade organizations I, I i haven't no one's told me that that there was um anything that was uh, sort of developing in what we're looking to do in terms of uh, being a marketplace, uh, being the center of, of sort of connecting and uh, helping market entry companies in this way. Um, and I, I'll maybe give you two examples. The European Business Innovation Network, EBN, who gets a fair amount of funding from the EU, um, it's, you know, sort of having the network we're developing um, is something that they're actually mandated by the EU to do via the, some of the grant money they get. Um, they've never done it. Um, so they're very excited about uh, the advent of our organization because they're looking to actually embed our platform into theirs so that their hundreds of incubators in Europe will have access to, um, much better access to um, highly credible um, service providers in the various jurisdictions that they're going to, and they're they're helping co companies go to every you know sort of marketplace in the world. Um, and we've had a similar reaction to NBIA, the uh, U.S. version of EBN, which is the International Business Innovation Association. They they get State Department and uh, Commerce Department dollars, and have similar obligations uh, by the grants they get, uh, but have never satisfied those obligations. 
And so um, our presence um, creates not only uh, better compliance for them, but it also creates um, a, a force multiplier. Um, these are lightly staffed organizations that are very much looking for tools, techniques to be much more efficient and to look much bigger than they are, and also to provide a, a service so they can continue to get the, you know, the grant dollars they get. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I certainly am, you know, aware, well aware of the, the various chambers of commerce and different trade organizations, but, I, you know, I think generally trade uh, chambers of commerce are are probably more focused on lobbying and uh, and uh, regulatory um, issues. Um, you know, we're we're going to be much more grassroots and and you know really aiming at the individual companies uh, coming into the markets and the companies that are are supporting them. Um, so I think we're going to be much more in the trenches than um, than a, a chamber would tend to tend to be. That makes sense, Sophie. Yes. Cool. Um, uh, so uh, let's see. Any other comments uh, that uh, on kind of the the marketing at all? Any other thoughts? Actually, I have another thought. <laughs> the podcast. Okay. Um, are you thinking of uh, having uh, uh, companies that have had a successful market entry uh, come on and sort of share their experience as well? Yeah, I think I think there's there's both, right? I think there's the opportunity to talk to successful companies, and I think uh, those that have had had uh, challenges. I, I think that that's a, a absolutely great idea, Sophie. So yeah, for sure. I, I think we want to look at both, and and you should. You know, and I'm not sure that I told you this yesterday, but part of our impetus to to sort of start this was uh, actually looking at our current clients. 100% of them came to us after really bad market entry experiences. So um, sometimes the, 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 bad, the bad experiences can be as instructive as the good. Um, so, but yeah, no, I think, I think we want to have a, uh, some, some yeah, good uh, conversations with market entry companies for sure. And I'd, I'd really like to um, actually, and, and this is maybe another thought for you all, uh, you know, probably many of you are are much better facilitators than I am, but we I am very open to and would really love to have uh, a few different hosts. Uh, you know, I think each of us would have different perspectives. We can uh, develop these in a common format. Um, but if you are interested in, um, you know, being a host, being a part of the host team for these uh, podcasts, um, I think that would be a really neat thing. So um, if you are interested in that, just ping me and we can, we can chat about it. Again, we're in formation. So there, there are no, no rules. We can, we can kind of do this um, how we want. And again, if our true north is, is helping market entry companies, you know, we'll find the right, we'll find the right path. That won't be hard. Um, so uh, two other quick things to mention. Um, uh, uh, our, I did mention a bit ago, but just want to come back to our next meeting is March 12th. It's a, a the second Thursday. I had to, I, I had to move from the first Thursday in, in March. Um, but uh, again, well, the topic that day will be customer experience. We'll certainly have a lot of uh, a variety of things to share. Um, we'll be just a few days from our meetup in New York and only like two weeks from our meetup in Boston. There'll be lots of excitement around that. And, uh, you know, certainly looking forward to moving the ball, uh, you know, much further downfield uh, before we get on that call. And, and maybe we'll have had our first podcast. If, if not, we'll have, certainly it'll be uh, well planned out at that point. Um, and then, um, again, just a reminder and a request to please, you know, share uh, via the survey. Um, any thoughts you have about future meeting topics, uh, and if you haven't found it yet, it's at the very bottom of today's agenda. And just for those who haven't been on our agenda before, these are continuous agendas. So if you get to January 2nd, that was our last meeting, that is the bottom of the agenda. Um, so uh, it's uh, sort of in the top uh, third of the second page is when you'll, you'll get to the bottom of today's agenda. Um, but so there are two sort of opportunities um, giving feedback in terms of what events and then also sharing 
any blog posts or content uh, that you'd like to get up on the uh, Softland Partner site, please do that. We're happy to, you know, uh, get stuff in place and uh, do all sorts of good cross links and all that fun stuff. So, I think those are our topics for today. Uh, is there anything else that um, would be helpful for anyone? Any anything anyone wanted to mention? Any brags? Any uh, neat opportunities? I'm curious about the uh, Slack group. Um, I clicked on it, but couldn't get in. So is, do I need to have a specific invitation or? Yeah, you, you, so that's the, uh, uh, we uh, keep that to members only. So just mm -hmm. fill out the member application right. and we'll, we'll get you in there. So, yeah. Okay, okay. and that's but, the uh, main tool of communication between members. Yeah, exactly. So you can socialize uh, opportunities, needs, any of that kind of stuff really easily and either connect to the group or to specific individuals real easy. Cool. Any okay. other, anything else? Anyways, yeah, go ahead, Joan. I have a quick brag. Oh, <laughs> I'm good. I'm pretty excited because um, one of the companies that came through one of the programs that we do in partnership with another organization, Richie Foundation, um, has actually, uh, this week, they're making their first move to the U.S. So we've been setting them up with, you know, meetings and potential collaborations, and they've um, co now are collaborating. It's, it's, a, it's actually a company from Valencia, Spain, and they are an advanced polymer company um, that uh, wants to get into the supply chain for offshore wind and everything around the eastern seaboard is having an offshore wind. They're going to position themselves to be part of that supply chain. So they have um, decided to take a first office in one of our incubators associated with UMass Dartmouth Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. So I'm going to meet them down there with the welcome wagon on Thursday. So it's kind of just the way we kind of wanted things to go. And I hope to be working with them along, along the way. They'll be coming back and forth for a while, but they'll be looking for other key connections here. So um, hope this group can help. That's great. That's, uh, we, we certainly will. Uh, that's awesome, Joan. Congratulations. Cool. Anything else for the good of the order? All right. Well, you all have a great uh, rest of your day. Uh, again, feel free to ping me. We'll have lots more coming out. You'll see invites to New York and Boston uh, to those meetups uh, in the next couple of days. But uh, yeah, anything else, just uh, let me know. So anyway, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Bill. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.